It's time to modify our code so that the user will not be able to submit any invalid data. I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. You can use both of them if you prefer. Let's start with the first one. As you might know already, we have different properties that will tell us what the form status is. One of these properties is actually the dollar invalid one. So in our ng submit, instead of blindly submitting the form, we're going to add a check on our form, and that will be add event form dot dollar valid and our form submission. Thanks to this change, Angular will first verify that our form is valid, that all the data has been validated, and then it will invoke our function. I'll quickly populate the form data, so Angular conference, the best conference, 2015, 10, 01, location somewhere, category special, and the email is angular at webyourmind.com. So I'll click on submit and everything is valid. Therefore, Angular is not preventing me from submitting the event. But if I now try to remove the name, for example, and submit again, nothing will be created. Also, if I completely clean up the form and I just type a new event, new event, nothing happens, right? This is the first method and it's quite easy, but I would also like to prevent the user from clicking the submit button if the form is invalid. So I want the submit button to be enabled only and exclusively if all the data in the form is valid. To do so, I'm going to change my input, my submit input, which is at the very bottom of our template. And I'll add a new directive, which is ng-disabled. Again, it takes an expression as usual, and our expression will be add event form dollar invalid. Right? And if we go back to our page, we refresh, so we will apply our changes. The submit button is now disabled. And as soon as I enter valid data, test. 2015, October the 1st, location somewhere. I've filled in all the required field. The email is not a required one. The submit button is now enabled. And in the same way, if I remove the location data, the submit button is now disabled. That's fine, as long as we tell the user that the reason why the submit button is disabled. Instead of preventing the user from clicking the submit button, we might uh, highlight the invalid field with a red color and we can tell the user what it needs to do in order to be able to submit the data. Well, why don't we do that in the next lesson?